Let's talk about Nancy Pelosi. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to get to this. Because Nancy Pelosi was on <laughs> Morning Joe, which has an audience of one. This is specifically for one guy. It is identical to Donald Trump in that regard. Obviously, the Fox and Friends, or was it Fox 5? No, it's Fox and Friends of the Morning was for Donald Trump. He loved that show. He watched it all day, every day. He called into it. Morning Joe is Joe Biden's Fox and Friends. So Nancy Pelosi is like, hey, let me publicly go on here and just, you know, reiterate some concerns. Uh, Speaker Pelosi, I, I want to start with you on uh, President Biden first, um, because over, over the past 24 hours behind the scenes, there's been a lot of depression among Democrats, the phone lines burning up, uh, concerned about his candidacy and whether or not he can win. And some even out loud are shaky at best about President Biden, whether or not he should step out of the race. Um, the headlines, the polling, it all feels very dark. How do you think the president is doing in light of his poor debate performance? Can he do more? And what do you say to Demo Democrats in Congress and even members of the Senate who are beginning to waver in their support? Good morning, Mika. I, I, that's one version of the story. Uh, what I do want to say is that yesterday I was honored to be present at the president's speech for Na at NATO, he was absolutely spectacular. He was received over and over again uh, with uh, ovations for what he had to say and the force with which he said it. One thing I need you guys to pay attention to right now, one thing I need you to pay attention to is that anytime somebody talks about Biden or specifically to Biden, okay, because that's what Nancy's doing here, they always talk like they're talking about like a child <laughs> or I don't know, a dog that is going to die soon. There's this <laughs> energy in the air where everyone's like, yeah, you know, he's doing his very best. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Isn't he such a good boy? He's doing the NATO thing. It's a big week for him. He's so brave. He's doing his goodest, his darndest. And it's crazy. It's like, bro, that's the president. That's the president. We're not hyping up a, a, a five-year-old for coloring inside the lines here. What do you mean? He's having a big week, okay? It's NATO's 75th year anniversary. It's a big week for Brandon. And I can tell you firsthand, as a person who orchestrated many of the pieces of legislation that the president takes great pride in, and he should, because he was there at the table, chapter and verse, very conversant with a vision. That's crazy. He was able to speak. The president, folks, isn't he the best? He was capable of speech. That's right. He was holding his own like the goodest boy. He was holding his own. Now, obviously, this isn't the main point, okay? The main point is coming, and you'll see when it comes. But she's doing the classic Democrat that's like, trying to fucking tell biden to step down move where they just like spend the first 10 minutes talking about how great he is talking about how wonderful of a job he's doing he carries himself with so much charisma and pizzazz and it's yeah open face shit sandwich yeah no literally it's just like it's a compliment sandwich just understand he is doing he is deservant of all of the vanilla ice cream in the white house tonight He's a good boy. So, Madam Speaker, you just went through the president's record, but let me ask you about the current moment. Does he have your support to be the head of the Democratic ticket? As long as the president has the president, it's up to the president to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. This is the this is the moment. Okay, pay close attention. It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to to make that decision. I'm sorry. Make the choice to run. Nancy Pelosi has not been in a fucking vacuum for the past week. She knows the president has decided. Why is she acting like he hasn't decided? He keeps saying, I'm running, Jack. Fuck you mean? It's up to the president to make that decision. He literally said, only God can take me out of this race. And then said, if someone wants to unseat me, they should run against me. Primaries are fucking over. And he's over here being like, run against me, Jack. So why is Nancy Pelosi saying that? Why is Nancy Pelosi saying 
oh, the president needs to make a decision. We're just all encouraging him to make the decision. He's made his decision. He's made his decision so many times over, as a matter of fact. So why is Nancy Pelosi still acting like the president has not made this decision? Is it because the Democratic Party apparatus only has one speed and that's just gaslighting? Sure, that's valid. They do love acting like the things that everyone can see and hear and, and understand and internalize are easily avoidable, right? <laughs> you could just be like, oh yeah, he hasn't decided yet. No, he has. He has said it time and time again, which he is going to address in a second. Let's keep going. Because time is running short. Uh, the, oh. uh, I think overwhelming support of the, of the caucus, it's not for me to say, I'm not the head of the caucus anymore, but uh, he's beloved, he is respected. And people want him to make that decision. He has, not me. he has said he has made the decision. He has said firmly this week he is going to run. Do you want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. And that's that's the way it is. Whatever he does. What do you mean? OK, so let's say Nancy Pelosi hadn't heard Biden say he's going to run. Let's say Nancy Pelosi is shocked at this new information that she just found out. OK, on motherfucking morning joe what's the reaction why is she not addressing the new information that she just found out about oh the president has made his decision that's weird he has said he has made the decision he has said firmly this week he is going to run do you want him to run i want him to do whatever he decides to do and that's that's the way it is whatever he decides we go with i think it's really important and i would hope everyone would join in to let him deal with this nato conference this is a very big deal 30 heads of over 30 heads of state are here all of his friends are here let him have his little party come on it's a big week for him He's a big boy. This is a big week. He's been trying to put this party together. It's a tea party. Let him have his moment. He's just a little guy. And then he'll make his decision. It's like he has, though. That's not what this conversation is about. The reason why she's answering in the way that she's answering this question, which is a very direct question, obviously, is for for the 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 reasons that I mentioned time and time again over the course of the past week uh, plus now which is they can't openly say I, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Emeritus, one of the most, you know, influential older members of the Democratic Party who have been a lifelong Democrat and a bulwark of uh, institutionalist uh, Democratic Party uh, uh, defense, am saying Joe Biden needs to step aside. She can't say that. That's chaotic. So she's trying to communicate to Joseph Robinette Brandon from the television. Hey, dickhead, come on, drop out. Am I having copium to think he mean this means he will step down after NATO meeting or they will push harder? Well, the closed door caucus meetings are happening and have been happening for this past uh, for the past two days now for the past three days now. And the issue is it's it's very back and forth. But more and more senators and House of Representatives, uh, like representatives in the House, are coming out and saying like, yeah, no, this can't continue. Wouldn't that message be taken better by Joe if she went and talked to him personally rather than doing it on TV? Like, why not just go to the White House and ask him straight up? I don't know what the best answer to that question is. It's pure speculation, right? But my speculation is that they have tried to pressure him. He's just not really listening. He's very stubborn. He, he did not calm his own party for a week after the debate. Like, he did not talk to anyone except for his his closest staffers that have been with him for like 40 years, Jill Biden and even Hunter fucking Biden. That was pretty weird. Since then, he's only talked to like a total of 20 Democratic Party members. One House Democrat, a Biden ally, told me they think the White House and campaign will limit the president after this week. I think he'll survive the convention if he just limits himself at this point. This is obviously not what many of the other Dem lawmakers are calling for. Yep. They're hitting the la la la, I can't hear you button, which is funny because that did carry him across the finish line, or at least that carried him to a victory in the last primary. And I think that they're making a mistake and thinking that this will carry him to the convention. And then after the convention, it's just like everyone is going to have to defend whoever the Democratic Party candidate is. Wonderful stuff. 
overall. I mean, here is uh, Doggett, the first Dem that actually called for Biden the drop, said that Pelosi is keeping the situation very open, very fluid. The fact that she's raising these issues, leaving it out there, indicates, I think, her realization that we can't go forward without some greater certainty on a number of aspects of the president's future. Nancy Pelosi could be like, no, nah, it's a done deal. She could hit the AOC line. Nancy Pelosi could turn around and say th exactly what AOC said and be like, Biden is the candidate. It's a done deal. Shut the fuck up. Let's move on. But she's not doing that. She keeps saying, oh, Biden's going to make a decision. Biden's going to make a decision. I don't think I'm being like, uh, I don't think I'm uh, holding out hope. I don't think I'm holding out hope and like huffing on copium when I see the the insanity happening in front of our eyes, uh, in front of our eyes unfolding as we speak. AOC is five head by being so pro Biden that the establishment becomes anti Biden. No, the the squad and their unconditional loyalty to Biden is completely irrelevant in this conversation because they know that they have no fucking momentum internally when it comes to internal party dynamics. They're nothing. If anything, it might even prove uh, uh, to be a, a negatively polarizing force that causes the, the, some of the holdouts to actually circle around Biden. Let me fail. You actually might be right, but you got to admit it's cringy to defend Biden. No, it absolutely is. Of course it is. But this is not a conversation that the progressives can have any statements on that will yield a productive result. This is specifically for the establishment Democrats to... Uh, decide on. By the way, Biden's uh, team strategy is to keep dripping appearances. The delay calls to drop out. He has a he has a Thursday meeting, a big boy meeting, as John Kirby said. He has a Thursday press conference at night. Okay, so remember that. And now he's announced that he's going to do a Lester Holt Monday night uh, conversation, primetime special. They're doing this because they're running out the clock. Not until November. Remember, this is something I already mentioned. They're running out the clock, not until November. They're running out the shot clock until the convention. This is unimaginably selfish. It's unimaginably selfish. Why the convention? Do normies even care about that? It's not about the normies. It's about the Democrats. This conversation is being had internally within the Democratic Party. If he makes it to the convention, it's over. Like, there's no going back from that. He knows that obviously no Democrat is going to fucking uh, come out and be like, that's the presidential candidate, but I can't in good conscience vote for him. No, of course. Of course, they're going to unite and they're going to, whether they want to or not, shut the fuck up and go with Joe. That is literally what is going on here. They will, the Democrats will absolutely fall in line if he makes it to the convention. And he knows that, and that's precisely why, or his team knows that, and that's precisely why they're trying to run out the clock, not until November, but until the convention, so the Dems unite behind the ticket when it's impossible to swap him. Could they backstab him at the convention? Yes, but that's very unlikely. In order for this to be a swift transition that doesn't harm whoever comes next, or Brandon himself, really, uh, and his electoral chances, his election chances, they have to do this quickly they have to do this efficiently they have to do this with grace and biden's senility and biden's cynicism and biden's stubborn pride and his his spite motivated attitude is causing this to not happen so is it against the rules or something for the dnc to change their nominee after the convention Yes, the convention is where you uh, officially designate the nominee. Obviously, if someone dies after the convention, that would be chaotic. But like, there, I'm sure there is like a like a mechanism there. It would be virtually impossible after uh, the convention to swap them out. So let's talk about George Jebediah Clooney, Mister Phony, Mister Fake Friend. He wrote an op-ed, a guest essay for the New York Times. He said, "I love Joe Biden, but we need a new nominee now." One of the most important parts of this article is it necessarily that George Clooney uh, has raised money for Joe Biden only like two weeks ago, three weeks ago? It isn't the fact that he's calling for him to step down. Many other donors have also called him to step down. Now, the real reason why this is pretty significant is because why he wants Joe Biden to step down. Because many of you saw Joe Biden's horrible performance on the debate stage. George Clooney, on the other hand, didn't just get to see that debate performance. 
George Clooney was side by side with Joe Biden. Let's go to Dana Bash. George Clooney got to experience Joe Biden in person. That is the real scary part of this equation. That's the scary part of this conversation. George Clooney saw Joe Biden in person and was like, oh my God, that's bad. As a matter of fact, it's as bad as what you saw on the debate stage. And he's not the only famous George that has stood side by side with the president, the current sitting president. George Stephanopoulos also had a beat. A TMZ person came up to him with a, you know, with a, with their iPhone out filming a private conversation where he said, hey, what do you think about the president? Like you saw him, you were next to him. Like, do you think you should stay in the race? And George Stephanopoulos famously yesterday said, no, he said, nah, he shouldn't stay uh, in the race. He's not fit for office. Here it is. Excuse me. Hey, how you doing? What do you think? Do you think Biden should step down? You talk to him more than anybody else have lately. And you could be honest. He, you don't he said, I don't think he can serve four more years. He said, yeah, I did sit next to him. I did sit down with him and I did talk. Now, at first we're like, oh, is that actually George Stephanopoulos? Do we know if he actually said that? Turns out he did. Because he openly stated that he did. He came out last night and said, yeah, I shouldn't have, you know, I shouldn't have said that, but it, it was me. I did say that it was me. I should be more careful with what I say to random people on the street. That's, that's it. I'm just saying, these are people who literally are fucking around Joe Biden, who uh, are not named Jill Biden or Hunter Biden. Okay. People who have been around Joe Biden for extended periods of time, having this position is pretty fucking scary. Is Brandon not surrounded by yes men at this point? He absolutely fucking lutely is almost entirely sheltered from opposition at this point. His family is standing with him, his wife, Jill, and sister, Valerie, who Democrats relied upon to provide wise counsel, not just cheerleading. His son, Hunter, has been seen at the White House so much lately that one well-connected lawyer slash lobbyist, Democrat, dubbed him the acting chief of staff. He's the gatekeeper. He's the one who's bucking up his dad. That is surely going to be phenomenal development for the uh, we are the non-chaotic party position that the Democrats are trying to desperately hold on to. The article, How Hunter Biden Became His Father's Gatekeeper. There is perhaps not a worse fucking thing that the Biden administration could do right now. Republicans have literally set up Hunter Biden as like the biggest cudgel to Brandon's reelection for four years. They tried to set up Hunter Biden as a, as a propaganda point against Joe Biden in the last election cycle. It failed. Why did it fail? Because you could just so easily say, why is Hunter Biden even remotely relevant? He is nowhere near the white house. So what do you do? After he gets convicted, what do you do? You bring him into the White House? For the past four years, the easiest thing the administration could say is like, yeah, Hunter Biden is, is his own person. He is not relevant to Joe Biden's administration. He's not relevant to his reelection. That was the easiest way to fucking neutralize the argument that Hunter Biden is like uh, this this secret thought leader in the in the uh in the branded administration and they fucking turned around and brought him into the white house but do white suburban moms actually buy this are these people leaning dem right now who care about the hunter biden shit that much no but what you fail to rem what you fail to consider is that that those past four years of anti-hunter biden propaganda and also beyond the anti-hunter biden propaganda is still going to be heard by moderates Moderates who think the Trump administration was too chaotic. Moderates that the Democratic Party have been desperately trying to signal to. Independent voters and moderates who may have even voted for the Republican Party in the past, voted for Donald Trump in the past, that turned around in 2020 and voted for Joe Biden because Joe Biden is an elder statesman. Joe Biden actually means business as usual politics. Joe Biden means we can go back to fucking brunch. No more paying attention to Trump. No more antics, no more chaos, no more commotion, no more confusion. People care about someone who's convicted felon status as many independents and many moderates, of course, care about Donald Trump's convicted felon status. They are absolutely going to see your crackhead fail son in the White House and all this coverage on your crackhead fail son in the White House being now this uh, 
this this secret chief of staff and they're gonna go what the fuck is happening this is why we didn't vote for trump this is why we voted for joe why the fuck we want a cokehead fail son of the white house that's crazy i don't want that shit but here's what a top Biden fundraiser and longtime supporter, George Clooney, said about that in his op-ed this morning. Would it be messy? Yes, dem democracy is messy, but would it enliven our party and wake up voters who, long before the June debate, had already checked out? It sure would. The short ramp to Election Day would be a benefit for us, not a danger. John Favreau and David Axelrod are back with me. Um, Ax, what do you think about that Ax. argument? Look, I, I think there's merit to it. You know, sometimes you, you, this is all a matter of risk assessment. There's risk associated with everything. The, the thing about the peace data that I thought was particularly impactful was Clooney, who just uh, hosted a fundraiser, a major fundraiser for the president, said he, the, you can't win the battle against time. None of us can. It's devastating to say. But Joe Biden, I was the Joe yeah. Biden I was with three weeks ago. The fundraiser was not the Joe Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. He was the same man yeah. we all witnessed at the debate. That is devastating. That's devastating. That is the biggest line. That's what I wanted to stress the importance of. Not one, but two Georges who have been around Biden recently have said that he is not fit to serve. He is not fit to be in office. He is not fit to run for re-election. That is unimaginably devastating. That's terrifying. Response to those comments from George Clooney, Jake, a campaign official who attended that Los Angeles fundraiser tells me that George Clooney left three hours before the president. So clearly the gloves are off, Jake. What, but what does that mean? What? What? What is that? Are you, is the team saying that Biden is more dynamic than George Clooney? Is that what their argument is? Isn't that worse? Isn't, doesn't that mean that he like saw what was going on and was like, I can't be here. I don't want to fucking be here. George Clooney literally was like, oh my God. I mean, sure, we'll fundraise, but God damn, the situation is dire. <laughs> wow, what a banger retort, dude. Thank you to the, the Biden team doing it again. <laughs> Damn, they they have such a fine way of uh, way with words. Like the expectation from the public that hears this is supposed to be what that like we're now gonna assume that actually Biden is more dynamic than George fucking Clooney. Okay, you got me. Why do we care what George Clooney has to say? I don't give a shit. But obviously, when I say Joe Biden is fucking demented and old since 2019 nobody gives a fuck the unfortunate reality is this is the situation in front of us nobody gives a shit about what like you know people like myself have to fucking say people like you have to say they care about a guy who raised 14.5 million dollars in one night for the democratic party has to say though a person who by the way make no mistake has a direct line of communication with barack obama as well George Clooney is homies with Barack. I suspect he's probably had a conversation with him as well about this article before he wrote it. You want to know how fucking devastating it is? Here, you want to see some internal polling? New. Internal Democrat polling post-debate has Biden down double digits in swing districts, New York 17 and New York 19, and down a point in New York 22. All districts Biden carried in 2020 per party source. The three competitive upstate suburban districts are considered a part of the suburban New York bellwether districts. That's why the New York Democrats came out and said, holy shit, you have to drop out. Earlier today, the fucking New York Lieutenant Governor Antonio Delgado came out and released a statement. He said, President Biden deserves our eternal gratitude, blah, blah, blah. You already know. He can add to his legacy showing his strength and grace by ending his campaign and making room for a new leader. Israel's strongest soldier, most loyal soldier, Richie Torres, came out with a statement and said, hey man, I don't know what's happening right now, but like maybe we should reconsider. New, four sources close to Biden's re-election effort tell NBC News the campaign is suffering a major downshift in donations and the officials are bracing for a seismic fundraising hit. The money has absolutely shut off. Two of the sources close to the re-election effort said this month is on a path for fundraising to be down by possibly half or much more, one of them said, from larger donors alone. Sources emphasize that donations were down across the board. Here's more internal polling. This is Wisconsin. On MSNBC, Nicole Wallace, one of Biden's world, uh, one of Biden world's favorite voices on the network, reads Wisconsin polling showing Biden dragging down congressional Democrats. 
This is the other side of the equation. Biden doesn't just end up imploding his campaign and allow Donald Trump to win. He also brings down the down ballot candidates because there's no world in which people just go, oh, I'm a split ticket voter. People are already going to be so angry that we're having this conversation. We may as well go there, Wallace said, before laying out Harris's political advantages, saying she gave an electric speech and was magnetic. She has chops that often don't get showcased. She does not. She does not have chops that often don't get showcased. She's just simply better than Biden because she is not demented.